Good evening, I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. On Sunday afternoon, Husker softball was selected for the NCAA Regional in Stillwater, Oklahoma, as they will look to make a run towards the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. Nebraska's first matchup is with Wichita State Friday at 6 p.m. Nate Rohr is set to bring you radio coverage beginning at 5.45 p.m. Coming up on the show, Jessica Cootie had a chance to get a first reaction from head coach Rhonda Ravel regarding the postseason news. The Nebraska men's track and field team won the Big Ten Outdoor Team Championship on Sunday in Bloomington, Indiana. The Huskers tallied 151 points at the meet, the most points they've scored at a conference meet since 2004. The Nebraska women finished in third place with 112 points, the most points they've tallied since joining the Big Ten. Husker Track and Field now turns their attention to the NCAA West preliminary round in Sacramento, scheduled for May 24th through the 27th. In the NHL West second round, the Kraken and the Stars will battle it out for a Game 7. That meeting takes place in Dallas at 7 p.m. Only one game has gone final in the MLB today as the Nationals routed the Mets 10-2. Currently in action, the Angels and the Orioles are just getting started. And later tonight, the Yankees match up with the Blue Jays. The Mariners take on the Red Sox. The Brewers visit the Cardinals. The Braves meet up with the Rangers. The Cubs face the Astros. The Reds challenge the Rockies. The Diamondbacks take on the Athletics. The Royals visit the Padres. The Phillies confront the Giants and the Twins battle the Dodgers. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for a full two hours of Sports Nightly here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich, long count, turns, gives it off to Gabe Irvin, left side. Gabe stiff arms a man, is in the end zone for a touchdown off the left end. Good. Yes. <laughs> it's a gold star stiff arm by 22 to find Pater. And the White extends their lead to 12 0. Sims by himself on the shotgun. Jeff gets the snap. Got a quarterback draw, runs to the five and gets stood up and breaks oh, a tackle, tackle into the end zone for a touchdown. There's the length and strength of Jeff Sims breaking a tackle. The two. 1 1 here. Drill to left field. That one's out of here. Dylan Carey makes it back to back home runs for the Cornhuskers. They lead 2 0. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Oh, kind of an exciting day. Starting to see some college football kickoff times announced today by some of the networks. Nothing for the Huskers yet, but I think it's close. I think we're close to getting some kickoff times. It's exciting. They should have done like a full-on schedule release like the NFL did because then we could you know, rip out all of these crazy videos. Like, did you see the one that they were interviewing the... Um, Tennessee Titan the, fans. The, I was yeah. going to say the people that had been enjoying some cocktails on Broadway in no, Nashville. They all, now, that, <laughs> now, they weren't all enjoying cocktails. They just weren't big NFL fans. There were a few of them that were yeah. enjoying some cocktails, I believe. Probably right. But that was hilarious. And so that maybe we should start doing that where we can do this big to-do with the schedule release. I think it would be fun. Today they kind of threw a few little morsels out there. The first... CBS Big Ten game got announced today. It's going to be Iowa at Penn State, September 23rd. Pretty good matchup, 7 o'clock at night. The first NBC Big Ten football game got announced. Michigan State at the Shoe to take on Ohio State November the 11th. And then uh, Fox came out with two of their big noon matchups right out of the gate, Labor Day weekend. Prime time going to TCU to play the Horn Frogs. So prime time gets big noon. I thought that looked a little crazy seeing the Big Ten logo next to the CBS Didn't it look logo. Deep? I liked it, though. I mean, no, it's cool. It was awesome, but I just, it looked, it just, it's uh, it's different. It's different. You're used to seeing that SEC logo, but hey, I love it. So Don't get me on an SEC rant yet. No, we're going to get that. <laughs> save it, save it, because I'm gonna, I need that for later. So the other big noon kickoff, it's Ohio State, Michigan. You knew that was coming. That's going to be on November 25th. That one's kind of a given. You knew that. But the Colorado big noon one, I think does affect us because I think that means we're probably not big noon with Colorado the next week. I don't think they do that back-to-back weeks. Sometimes they do. They've done that with Oklahoma several times. I just don't know if they want to kick a game off at 10 a.m. in Boulder. True. 
So with them being on that first week, I bet we're not on that one. So we'll, we'll see. We're, we're being told we're maybe a week or so away from getting some Husker football start times. But you're right. Seeing the CBS logo up next to the Big Ten teams, yeah, we haven't seen that in decades. I mean, it's exciting for sure. I, I would love to be a fly on the wall in the bidding on which – networks want certain games and what oh, times would it be fun i would love to just be able to take that in fly and, on the wall fly and on how the wall. they're negotiating who gets what games because i mean it would it be like a snake draft like okay you get first pick i think it would i think it kind then of you is. get in week one you get second pick then you get third pick okay for week two you get you get first pick you get Second pick. You know what I mean? Like I think it works sort of that way. I do. And then you then you go from there. Okay, if I get the number one pick, then I'm going to put this. Because Fox has got the big noon. We have the three different times. But isn't there, doesn't Fox have another night game too? Do they not? They do. They have some night games. So then it would be like, okay, so then now it's, it's where am I going to put right. certain teams? But I mean, it's. I love the fact that you're going to have a marquee game at every all the windows time of the day. Because how many times are we sitting there? I'm sitting on the sideline because my Wi-Fi doesn't work half the time. Hey, what's the score of this game? Yeah. I'm asking you guys yeah. up in the booth what's going on. So to be able to like take in more of those exciting matchups, I'm I'm so well, glad for the conference for that. And for Colorado's game with TCU, we will get to watch that because the Oscars play Thursday night. We yep. open in Minneapolis, so we'll have a whole Saturday to kick back and watch. All of that. So those came out today. I think we're going to see a slow drip of these over the next 10 days. So who knows? Maybe tomorrow we get a Husker football uh, starting time. That, that's pretty cool. Jessica, we, I guess we can finally end the Dylan Rayola drama. Uh, it's come out today that he is committed to Georgia. The, the son of a former Husker great center in Dominic Rayola has now ch chose Georgia. This is after he chose Ohio State initially. And I know Nebraska, now spanning two different staffs, has spent a lot of time and effort on Rayola. I'm kind of glad, and I kind of hope it's over. And I know we didn't get him, but I'm kind of ready to move on. Yeah, I say I'm with you on that. I mean, would have been awesome if he chose to came here, come here and maybe he wants to kind of um, pay, pave his own legacy. And the I was not shocked that it was not Nebraska. Maybe it was a little bit more shocked that it was not USC being the success that Lincoln Riley has had with quarterbacks. But Lincoln Riley has a lot of depth. He just signed the number one quarterback, I believe, in this last class right. that's coming in, that's going to move in after Caleb Williams. So, um, you know, he's kind of been known as the quarterback whisperer. But, you know, I just I think maybe with the way that this offense is going too. I mean, you know, we've, we've heard Coach Rule say that it's got to be – you, you got sometimes you got to play help the defense out a little bit. It's not just going to be throwing it all over the yard and and putting up a bunch of points like what USC does. So for some of these quarterbacks that want to throw it all over the place, might not be a destination that they want to play in, and right. that's okay because you know I think the the offense here can find a better fit for what works with how they want to run their offense. But so now we'll see where do we go from here. Yeah. Where does the staff go now? Now they've they've obviously they've had a couple of quarterbacks on campus in the last couple of months uh so but now i think you know the staff probably can go okay let's move on wish him well and no hard feelings we'll go on down the line and look to your next win i think your point's right i think they want more of a dual threat quarterback than than what maybe even rail is and, and i would love to at some point maybe years down the road maybe he can really be honest about what maybe his heart was kind of pulling him here maybe you know because he grew up a fan here but ultimately wanted to go where Maybe he felt like it was a better fit for him. But, you know, yeah, I felt like it was kind of a little bit ongoing. Like, okay, when is this decision going to be made? Which is kind of how some of these, a lot of these big name recruits are nowadays. It just seems to take forever. And I'm like, okay, this is a little drawn out. It's why I don't get too much into recruiting. And then you can always flip at any point too. True. You know, until, you, until they sign. Which is for him, December. Yeah. And so until you actually sign that that national letter of intent, it is non-binding. A commitment is non-binding. And we see a lot of commitment switch over the years. It's, it hasn't become as big of a deal just to commit. Well, and I think the message to Husker fans, Matt Rural and this staff, they put the press on him. They, they went after him. They, they all traveled out there multiple times to go visit him in his high school. I still have visions, Jessica, of, of Dylan throwing the bones at the basketball game yeah. that he went to back in February or whenever it was that he was here. So I think there's a love in him, in him for Nebraska because his dad is his dad's alma mater. 
But I think you're right. I think he just kind of felt a pull maybe a little somewhere else. That's okay. That's that's being an 18-year-old. That's your prerogative to do that. Absolutely. And and one thing we've come to know about this staff is they're going to be completely honest and about what things are going to look like. They're not going to tell him, hey, we'll change the offense for you if that's not what this system is going to be. You know, obviously, if you have a five-star talent and you – you know, feel like you can tweak some things for around a quarterback. But for the most part, like this, this system is going to be what it is. And if, if you want to come be a part of it, great. But if you, if you don't, we're not going to change everything. So they're not, and they're not going to tell you that they're going to either is what I'm getting at. They're not going to BS anybody just to get their commitment. They're, they're straightforward. They're completely honest with these guys. And I think that's what's so refreshing to some of these recruits. They're not going to spin it in any way where it's a lot of recruiting pitches are that way where they spin it, whatever you want to hear and to, to be able to get that person to come here. And that's why you're seeing the influx of transfer portal, I think, is right. because they're getting a sell that doesn't end up being what they were sold in high school. Who knows? Dylan Rayola may end up back here in two, three years. We don't know. Could happen. Um, I don't want to get too far into the show without saying huge congrats to Coach Sinclair yes. and the Oscar track and field team. The men win it. The women finished third, as Cole told you in the ticker. The men absolutely ran away with the competition, just dominating performances, particularly in the throwing and jumping events. Multiple winners on both the men's and women's side. The women were in first for a good chunk of the weekend, could not hang on uh, a good late burst uh, in that 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 caught them. But the men, I mean, my goodness, 151 points. They won the thing by almost 30 points over Minnesota. It was over before, like, the last three events. I mean, it was just a really impressive performance. You could tell when I sat down with Coach St. Clair last week, he felt pretty good. And you've been saying that since the indoor. Thought they were going to win it. Because they were adding a, a few more events that were going to be able to add to that. They were really close to winning it in the indoor, but were lacking a couple of those outdoor events, like the javelin that they got a few points on. But even the women, though, if it was not, if it was just a uh, – uh, field the Big Ten field championships they would have dominated it was they were just lacking in a couple of track events that the men had a couple of pieces points. that could add to those points or prevent other teams from getting points that the women did not have those pieces you and I've talked about this in the past it's it's a really it's a puzzle for track coaches because you only have so many scholarships you have to kind of pick what you've done and Gary Pepin for years he put his emphasis on the throws and the jumps and didn't save a lot of scholarship money for other events. You know when I knew Nebraska was going to win it is when Till, who's the great hip decathlete, went over, took one long jump, and won the long jump. I go, it's over. They're going to win now. I've got chills thinking about it. I'm going to actually have Till in studio. I'm talking to him tomorrow, so we're going to hear from him. He wins the decathlon, and then... What's crazy, Maddie Harris, the javelin thrower who helped jab you <laughs> rack up all the points this, this year, All-American, she sat here and we were just chit-chatting before, and she said, if I'm coach, Till needs to just go take one jump. Because, you know, they see him practice and, yeah. and they know that, Plus like, one hey, of the events he does in the decathlon, too. His one jump could get points for the team. So she's like, just do one jump. And then... He goes and does one jump, and it's enough to win the dang thing. Isn't that crazy? I mean, unbelievable. And and I was watching when that happened. I was watching live, and I saw him run over, and then just he was literally went from the pole vault pit. He was pole vaulting, and just and he and the announcers were saying, "Oh well, Till is on the long list, jump runway. The, the long well, no, he's on the on the list to compete for long jump." But they couldn't believe it. They were just kind of chatting about it, like, "How is he going to make this work?" Well, then pole vault for the decathlon ends, and they had already been through one round of jumps for the long jump. And then he just casually slides in there after missing, I think, the first two tries. And on the last try, just jumps, gets the and, – and immediately he knew it was good, and then he walks away and goes back to wherever uh, – whatever the uh, event was next. I don't know if they went to the pole vault or went – he went back somewhere else. Because then when they, they started the finals again – he was doing, I guess it, it was javelin. He, he went back the to javelin. the javelin. So, because then they were like, well, we'll see if Till comes back and jumps again. But at this point, he doesn't even need to. So you go, you're going back through when every every athlete's going through, they're jumping, and he's not coming back. And then, hey, he does. He never needs to come back because literally his one jump is enough to win win it. Unbelievable. Just an amazing athlete. One to, to be a decathlete, you've got to be an incredible athlete. I mean, he's probably one of the best athletes on campus to yeah. do all those disciplines. 
<laughs> just a sidebar and go, yeah, I'll go over and take a one quick jump and wins the long jump at the Big Ten level. This is not less like a small college event. This is a Big Ten conference. I heard the announcers, the track announcers, talking about how with the Catholics usually or the multi-event athletes, they usually have one that they're really, really good at or two that they're really, really right. good at, and then, you know, one or two that they're not as good at. But Till one was at the top of almost all of those events. Until the last one, which I'm sure he was just completely gassed, I think it was the 1500, 1500 yeah. was the only one that he was not finishing towards the top. Like, to me, that speaks volumes. The, fa the fact in those 10, a 10 events, he is one of your best, scores he's one of the top scores and back in the indoor when he finished an all-american all of those athletes like his i think he finished fourth right fourth or third but his score would have been enough to break the record all That's of those right. athletes that finished like one through four all had the most points ever scored by decathletes in the indoor championships well, it's look, unbelievable certainly impressive i'm looking at the point totals nebraska on the men's side gets 21 points out of the shot put. They really cleaned up there. They got 19 points out of the high jump. Mason Connor wins the high jump. I think we had another couple of other I think they went one, jumpers. two, one, think or one, three. One, two, or one, three. That's right. That, well, 19 points, you have to have a couple guys score. Oh, they went one, two, women went one, three. That's what go. it was. But then I think they had both the high jumpers had another one in the top eight, which also scores. The men also get 18 from the discus, 18 from the javelin, 11 from the decathlon, the decathlon because... Till wins it, and then another Husker finished eighth in the decathlon, so they got an extra point out of that as well. Just impressive. Run away with it. And a really solid performance by the women, too, particularly in the throws. You're right. They didn't do much at all on the track. They did really well. High jump did great. They did great in the javelin throw. They crowned a couple of champions. I think they'll feel really good about that place. But, man, the men just absolutely dominated that meet. First win in seven years. you got to think – there's, I mean, there's a lot of great track programs, but at this point, if they did what they did on Saturday, they've got to be able to be in contention for a potential national title. They're ranked sixth. I mean, if you got to have a couple guys score in, in places, and you got to do what you did, but I mean, they could very well make some noise at a national championship. Sure could. They've got, and they've got some people that can score. And Axelina, the the female shot putter, I think she had the best shot put uh, in third best in the in the history of the NCA so she's got a chance to win an NCA championship on there's that there's a lot of individual there are. Uh, athletes that could potentially win individual titles for, for sure. sure so congratulations well done coach Sinclair and I know he would tip his cap to Gary Pepin because Gary got this team kind of said a lot of these a lot of these names the Darius Luff those names we've been talking about for a couple years now yeah absolutely I mean but there's just such momentum for this track and field team. And even Coach St. Clair and I were talking before we recorded, um, you know, some of the areas that maybe they, they didn't have as many points getters, they're about to add with those football athletes right. that are coming some sprinters in. sprinters and stuff that'll help There are them. a couple yeah. of, of sprinters that are absolutely going to add to that. So, I mean, there is a, just tremendous momentum with this track and field program right now. Really cool to see. All right, here's what we have coming up on the program. Husker softball back into the NCAA tournament, back-to-back -back years. They're headed again back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I don't mind that. I, we'll talk more about that. We're going to get into that in a deep dive. Ronda Ravel, uh, Jessica caught up with her yesterday at their selection show. We'll play that clip back for you coming up here in a few minutes. It's our final baseball show of the year. The head coach, Will Bolt, will be here in hour number two. Huskers coming off of a sweep over Penn State. They have clinched a spot in the uh, Big Ten tournament that starts next Tuesday up in Omaha. Uh, we will... Uh, We'll have that conversation with Coach Bolt coming up in hour number two. Get your comments, questions ready for him. And as always, our phone lines, text signs open for you, 402-413-2400. We're back with more of the show, including Coach Ravel, her thoughts about being back in the tournament. That's coming up next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. 
So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan, the here for laundry 20-year loan, and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealers, applying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you on a Monday. A lot has happened. It always seems like that happens. We take a few nights off and we're like, we come back, we're like, Holy cow, there's been 10 news things that have happened. Absolutely. I, it always happens. It always happens. Then we can be here four straight nights and nothing breaks. <laughs> Cole's like, what's going to go on the ticker tonight? There's nothing to talk about. We're like pulling out lists and 
best name lists yeah. and all of that <laughs> kind of stuff. And Well, one of the really good things was Husker softball getting back in the NCAA tournament this year. You went to their watch party. That had to be fun yesterday. It was. I mean, I think – it's so it was kind of funny talking to Coach Ravel. Love her. She's one of my favorite coaches ever. Um, you know, she's done this a time or two, right? And yep. but each year is so different and and the not knowing for sure. And I think a lot of it we're gonna get into the uh not knowing with the committee. Sometimes their criteria is different every year, so you never know what they're actually gonna lean towards to putting teams in. So but hey, the Huskers are in, and so I got a chance to chat with her pretty much uh, right after the announcement that Nebraska would be headed to Stillwater. Well, Coach, you've seen Nebraska pop up on the screen a time or two. How did this one feel different here today? Well, I've been a little uh, on pins and needles all day because I didn't know if we would see Nebraska on the screen. So it really didn't matter where we were seeing Nebraska. It's that we're seeing Nebraska on the screen. That's really fun. How excited are you to go back to the postseason with this group? Well, it's really special. You know, we've, this, this group has, has done a lot for this program to get it back in its winning ways and to be able to cap it off with a postseason run now is really special. They're a great group. They're really easy to coach and glad that we get to write it a little while, while longer. At this point, you guys have seen some tough battles all throughout the season. You've prepared yourselves well. You've had a tough conference. Wait, what goes into preparing now at this point with now just a few days before you hit the postseason? You know, I think about now it's about being fresh and it's about being confident. And, and it's it's there really are no secrets. We've played Wichita State twice. We've played Oklahoma State twice. The only other team we haven't played in the team is UMBC. And I don't know what all the letters stand for. for sure. <laughs> uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Is that right? I think so. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so, you know, it, it and and in all of those cases, we had some close games, and then we had some, some games that weren't as close with those, those teams. But um, I felt like none of those teams saw the best Nebraska. And I think Courtney said it best at our little gathering about a week ago. Nebraska hasn't played its best softball yet this season. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how is this team different from, you know, you played Oklahoma State in the opening week in our second weekend of the season. How is this team different from that team? Well, we played them opening uh, second weekend and third weekend. Yeah. And then we played Wichita State, I think, fourth weekend. So it's been a long time. I mean, it's been two months plus since we've seen those teams. And I think that we've just, we've settled in. We've had some injuries that we had to overcome that we were in the process of overcoming when we saw both of those teams. In fact, when we played Oklahoma, or when we played Wichita State, we didn't have Sid Gray at third base. We had Brooke Andrews at third base so there were different things and I think that we've just settled into who we are in our identity now at this this point in the season I asked Courtney this too but this team has found ways to win different ways whether that be a pitcher's dull defense or just out hitting people I mean what can you say about that in the way that they found different ways to win which is a lot of times that's what it takes in the postseason well well it is and I think you know there's there's no secret in the postseason it's timely hitting good pitching, good defense. And when we've had good luck at, down the stretch here, we've had all those things engaged and really looking forward to Courtney having another shot, getting back out there in the circle. I, I, I said it publicly, I'll say it again. She and I agreed. She threw her best complete game against Illinois. So the last time she was on the mound for a complete game was her best outing as a Husker. So she, she has a lot of good stuff to draw on right now. What can you say about her and just what she's done this year to get you guys to this point? Yeah, you know, she has been amazing in that, you know, I think if you look at it, she had about 120 innings last year, and that was the most innings she'd ever thrown. I th she's knocking at the door 200. She'll eclipse 200 innings, and when K.K. Kenny went down, she just, I mean, she just kind of walked in, threw her shoulders back, and said, if I need to throw in every game, I will, and she's really shouldered a lot of the innings, and then I think Sarah's had a little over 100, but when you, when you look at collegiate softball right now, Jessica, you don't see two two pitchers doing all the pitching like they have. And um, so it's a real testament for our team and our pitching staff to get us to this point in the season. It's a different year, but a year ago, you were taking a lot of young players that had never been in the postseason. Now that they, they had experienced this and they kind of know what it's about, how is that different when you go from year one experiencing this to year two? Well, I hope it really helps them settle in. And not only is it year two, it's year two at the same place. Mm -hmm. I mean, they probably know how the practice setup is going to go. Who knows? We might, might be in the same hotel. We might go to the same practice facility. You know, we know how their outfield, you know, the little chips that they have in their outfield. There's a lot of things. And maybe you'll be there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I got for you, just, I mean, you, you've coached a lot of teams that have made special runs. What goes into a, a putting everything together here th this time of year? I think, first of all, it's confidence. You, you gotta, you gotta believe you can. And you know, we're, we've all got our believe socks. I should probably get you a pair of the believe <laughs> socks too. If you're coming to Stillwater, we'll get you a pair of the believe okay. socks. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. um, and and that you just that you just go for it. 
that there's nothing to fear. I mean, you just, you're aggressive and you go for it and you just put it all out there and you leave it all on the field. Congratulations, coach. Looking forward to it. Thank you. You know, this time of the year, the biggest thing is getting in. You're going to have to beat tough teams to advance, right? That's part of making the NCAA tournament. The best of the best make the tournament. But I will say this. I got two text messages right away from people very well connected and softball across the country that said that's a great draw for you guys going to Stillwater. I agree. Oklahoma State has not played well down the stretch. Now, they're a very talented team, and Nebraska has played Oklahoma State twice really early on in the season. One was not very close. The second one was pretty competitive. You heard Coach Ravel talking about it. I mean, it's a different team. It's such a long season, and teams change so much from February to now. And then uh, Wichita State was one of their poor performances, I think Nebraska thinks. And also, you know, as you heard, Sid Gray was not in at third. Brooke Andrews was was playing third. And so they weren't at full strength when they played Wichita State. So, um, you know, I think there's a chance. I mean, if Nebraska brings it, they got a chance to advance. Absolutely. Every year you see some some bumps in the road for teams that host. Not every host automatically gets on to the Super Regional round. I, I don't mind this at all for the factors you just laid out. And I think it helps Nebraska that they were there just 12 months ago. They're familiar with the surroundings. They're not going to be looking around and gawking around. They're going, oh, yeah, we played here before. The paddle people are out there at softball, so they'll be fully prepared sure. for the paddle people. But, yeah, I mean, that's what you heard, Coach. Everything that they just did a year ago, which was their first time doing it, now they're just – Rinse and repeating. It's right. nothing will be new for them this year. So you got a team that's experienced. And then not to mention, Oklahoma State probably shouldn't have been a host site anyways. They should not have been a top eight seed from across. The, that was one of the biggest uproars in the seeding of everything anyways. So also you're, you're maybe talking about, even though they were the sixth seed overall, you're talking about a lot of people not thinking that Oklahoma State was a deserving team of one of those seating so you know you can get caught up in oh it's the number six team of the country well a lot of people don't feel like they were they were worthy of that seating either the, the way that they've been playing as of late yeah they just didn't they get swept by texas late they've lost 13 of their last 16 yeah. games or so something like that you're playing a team not playing their best uh, so i again i don't mind this at all and wichita state when the huskers played them and I, yeah they didn't play well and they played them at their place and so now you're gonna play them on a neutral site different deal and wichita state beat oklahoma state twice already this year so they're walking down there thinking they're going to win that regional. So you never know if, if uh, you know, you never know how this thing could end up. I mean, how if Wichita State ends up, you know, facing Oklahoma State, they've already kind of they probably got the middle edge a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, it. this is a really, you know, Nebraska being in it aside, this is an intri- an intriguing first round regional site, I think, for for college softball fans because you've got those three teams going into it. That I mean, if Nebraska is at their best, they can compete with the sure. best teams in the country. They've sure. shown that they can. Wichita State has been one of the the top hitting teams in the country as well, and then Oklahoma State has has proven that they could be one of the top teams in the country. So it's it's a fascinating matchup. It's just kind of where teams are at this point in the season. But I, I think it'll be fun, and I think. Huskers got a good chance to go down there and compete. Huskers play at 6 o'clock Friday night, Wichita State. Oklahoma State, because they're the higher seed, you get to pick when you want to play. They want to go early, get their team a little bit more rest for the next day. So 6 o'clock Huskers. You always have to put the caveat weather providing because this is thunderstorm season. And it's Oklahoma. (laughs) Right. Thunderstorm season in Oklahoma. It could go late. How did the committee do? How did? Is there a bias in college softball? We're going to dive into that topic Coming up next, 402 oh, <laughs> the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. That would be on our Sports Highly Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. We're back to talk about how the selection committee did putting together the field of 64 for the women's softball championships. We'll do that next. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org careers today. 
Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. UNL is the only Big Ten university in Nebraska, part of the only conference with an academic alliance. Being in the Big Ten means superior academics, unique student opportunities, better resources, and world-class research programs. With 72% of undergraduate students receiving scholarships or financial aid, UNL offers a Big Ten education at great value. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you, 402-413-2400. We went through the sop on her from Ronda Revelle. A lot of rumbling about the committee, the choices they made, some of the seating decisions that were made by the committee. Uh, lay that out for us. 
Well, there's a lot of things. I mean, it was, boy, it was, there was an uproar. You're talking about some of the biggest voices in all of college softball were flabbergasted with some of the seedings. Why Alabama got the a number five. five seed, why Oklahoma State was hosting. Um, there are certain schools that have no power five schools in their regional. There are some that have two. Um, just the way that it's, it was kind of laid out, I think, and it was questionable because and, and I saw another coach tweet out that it's almost like the committee changes what are their biggest factors that they're looking at each year. Year to year, right. And so so you go and you seed strength the schedule, and then that's not what they're looking for. This year, what was weighing was the top 10, top 25 wins. And But the, the problem is with that is that the top 25 is very heavily loaded with SEC teams. And so, you know, I, I did this stupid amount of diving today 12 of the 13 sec teams made the tournament, made the tournament. four of Ridiculous. them have losing conference records including missouri who had uh they were what were they seven and 17 in conference play they had 19 losses to top 25 teams they had eight wins um two of those were the first couple of weekends of the season which again those teams are so different then so you're talking about six wins and a lot of them were when they got one out of three, right? If they're playing a top 25 team that Take are all from game. the SEC, that they just got one win. It's just, to me, there's just this this incredibly huge bias. And we talk a lot about it with the football. And But I think it's even more of a bigger bias when it, in terms of softball. And even you could say women's basketball, too. They had some teams that had losing conference records but we talked about this with the big 10 as much as the big 10 men's basketball is touted as one of the best basketball leagues in the country how many times have we said if you don't have a 500 record in conference shouldn't get in you shouldn't get in i agree and so you're talking about a 7 and 17 team in conference got bounced in their first round of their conference tournament and they're in the postseason they weren't even even one of the five, last four in and then they have five that are hosting and, you know, Alabama was one of the big uproars that they should absolutely not. And then Montana Fouts, who's their big pitcher, is questionable for the right. rest of the postseason. They're going to get beat by Central Arkansas. I mean. Write it down. Central Arkansas is going to go win in that and win that regional. What's – help me with what's the SEC team that didn't make it. Do you know? It was um, Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Okay. The, what I just went through, and, and here's what I think ought to take more – What's your non-conference strength of schedule? What'd you do when you scheduled outside of your league? And, you know, Oklahoma's the perennial best team in the country. They Which, still have it, but, but again, they still play a great schedule. And Oklahoma, they have to. And, and Patty Gasol has a huge problem with the RPI. I, was, I worked with her for nine years. I've heard her talk about it. There's most college softball coaches have a problem with the way that this system is. And the RPI just needs to go away. Even her son, JT Gasso, put out yearly reminder, seed the top 32, more data and rankings in the selection process. RPI is not the only yeah. answer. Like they, But then again, it's only RPI when it needs to be RPI, right? When you want to get an SEC team, Correct. when you want to have that argument for an SEC team. I think the non-conference strength of schedule, when you look at those SEC teams, needs to be taken into account. Oklahoma plays a great non-conference strength of schedule. They had they were the number six non-conference strength of schedule. Northwestern, the number two. Here's some SEC teams. Tennessee, 65. Georgia, 68. A and M, 64. South Carolina, 147. And those teams are in the tournament. And the the reason why that improves is because they're playing each other. Exactly. But do you want to know how many teams made the tournament last year? Probably 12. 12. Do you know how many teams out of 12 of their 13 made the Women's College World Series? One. One. Yeah. Florida. Right. And so you have all these opportunities, and yet if they're the best, if they are the best conference and they should have 12 teams, they're that good that they have 12 teams in, then you should have more than one team you, that you make should, the Women's College World you Series. You should have half the field in yes, Oklahoma Yes, you City. should have more than one. Exactly. And it's just, it's infuriating. This sport needs to be looked at. But then I also, you know, on the bright side, I, I noticed this. Somebody put out this tweet. I think it was a former player, Dorian Kraft. She is uh, with the, I think, ACC Network. She said that, you know, I will say this discourse around the NCAA softball brackets is a sign the sport is growing and that fans are invested. When I was in college, I'm not sure anyone outside of coaches, players, and parents even knew when the tournament was, let alone who was in it. So the fact that there was this much of an uproar with everything, 
there's a lot of investment in it and there's a lot of people that care about it and that are paying attention to it and following their teams and and you know again I think the Big Ten completely got the short end of the stick only getting four teams in compared to what the other leagues got six from the ACC uh, I think six or seven from the Pac-12 and a lot of it is because those eyeballs are all there in the SEC bias for the on well, ESPN. I, I don't think it was a great year in the Big Ten. I really don't. I think there was a lot of average teams. Three or four years ago, this is before you got up here, we went into a tirade here because the Minnesota Golden Gophers, number two in the coaches poll, the last coaches poll, they were the Big Ten champs. They didn't get to host yeah, I remember they that. They weren't one of the top 16. And they sent Michigan to Washington, right? Michigan went to Washington. They had to go to Alabama. Minnesota had to go to Alabama. They were ranked second in the coaches' poll, and they didn't get one of the 16 home regional sites. That is a travesty. So this sport has a history of this going back for quite a while. I do think I saw somebody pretty notable. I can't remember because I've been doing a lot of research, but one of the notable ESPN, ESPN voices said that Ohio State passed the eye test. So if you're, you know, again, one of those things that they, they like to talk about, it's yeah. why you get people involved. Okay, well, maybe certain numbers, that's why you, you have, so you're not going solely off the RPI. Well, what about the eye test? Some people say there are a couple teams that probably could have passed the eye test. And the Big Ten Conference was better this year. So you're seeing maybe some teams yeah. that lost some games. I think it was better last year. I'm sorry, the bottom half of the league was probably not. Yeah. Like was, I was come up. So yeah. that's and that's what Coach Ravella said. Like the the Big yeah. Ten was more challenging because all the teams we got seven bids last year. And again, I'll go back to what Amy Williams has said about how the scheduling. Not everybody has to play the toughest teams. True, yeah. either. You know, I mean, not everybody had to play Northwestern. Right, Nebraska did. You know, same thing with the uh, Nebraska women's basketball. They had to play all the toughest teams right. twice. Yeah, and I, my my bigger fear, bigger picture for a lot of sports. ESPN has so much control of all these postseasons, and they're going to cherry pick the conferences that they're in business with. And right now, the Big Ten is not in business with ESPN. Well, maybe CBS, NBC, and Fox need to get something going like they do with the NCAA tournament, men's basketball, and they figure out a way to do a round robin with all the teams and all those different networks, and you slowly start taking away some of that monopoly. I, I hope that happens. I hope that Fox, particularly Fox, gets involved in some of the the future uh, discussions to televise some of the championship events. I'm just worried. I'm worried a lot across the board in sports that the ESPN has got too much pull in a lot of this stuff. Hey, buckle up, folks. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're back to a wrap up hour one next. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Woodhouse Chevy is making car buying better now with two convenient locations in Missouri Valley, Iowa and our newest location in Omaha at 112th and Dodge. Plus, going on now, receive 3.9% APR for 60 months on all in-stock 2023 Silverado 1500s when you finance with GM Financial. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy in Missouri Valley and now in Omaha. With approved credit, see dealer for details. Expires 5-31-2023. Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB play of the year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Nickelode Ultra. 
The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker Baseball will travel to West Lafayette to take on the Purdue Boilermakers final weekend series of the regular season. Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week, a day earlier because the Big Ten tournament starts next Tuesday up in Omaha. 5 o'clock, first pitch on Thursday. We'll be on the air with pregame at 4.30. Husker softball headed to Stillwater for the Oklahoma State Regional. They'll play Wichita State Friday night at 6. Our pregame coverage here on the HRN is at 540 Five. That is what is on tap, presented by Bud Light. Yeah, you were all over the track this weekend, and there was a lot to get excited about. What a just a great couple of days for Husker track. I enjoy watching track, actually. You know, like in the Olympics and stuff, and even the World Championships. It's actually a sport that I enjoy. I enjoy watching it, but, you know, just getting to do some interviews with some of the athletes, I was locked in. I like to, you know, once I know the athletes, I'm I'm interested in how they do, and it's easy to get excited about the performances that we saw all weekend. But, yeah, I was in all weekend. I was updating you, uh, you know, when something would happen. But it, it was exciting to well, watch. I had the website going with the live <laughs> results tab from the Big Ten Championships. I was tracking that yesterday. Doug in Norfolk says, when the college football playoff goes to 12 teams, are those games split between various networks? I don't, they just came out with that. I don't think they are. I, don't, may, I might be wrong. Doug, I need to check on that, but I, I think ESPN still controls that, I think. I'll, no, I think... Did Fox get in there and get a couple games? I don't think that's. it's all ESPN. I thought that there was an article that just came out on that recently, or maybe it hasn't been decided, but there's no way... Because that was part of the argument. They didn't want ESPN to have the mono- monopoly on the college football playoffs, so I don't think that that's going to be allowed. We'll do some diving into that, Doug. In fact, we've got... Little spoiler alert, Trev Albert's last radio show for this school year is next Monday night. Maybe that's a question we can get out of him. He he hangs out in all those Big Ten meetings where they talk about all those type of things. Fox is not going to allow ESPN to have all of those games. Why would you? There's no way you would let that I happen. mean, even NBC, CBS, they're not going to allow that. Wouldn't I mean, think. they're going to want in on that. So, But also, I'm pretty sure that was part of the, the discussion was that it was not going to just be given to ESPN. What they have right now with the four team is that's what the contract is up until when it goes to the uh, the new formula, the new format. But I, I'm pretty sure that was part of it was that no way ESPN could have all those games. I hope, I hope that's the case. Doug, we'll, we'll double check, but I, yeah. If I told you I knew for sure I don't, I think Jessica's right. I think it is divvied up, and hopefully Fox has a foot in the door. Fox has got a foot in the door in a lot of places now in college football, so you'd think that they would have an impact on that. I'm looking forward to this week. Even though we only have a couple more shows left, we're going to get a lot of good stuff for the folks. Absolutely. A lot of good guests lined up and lots of fun stuff to talk about. It's good. Good time of year. Our sports nightly hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime they've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. They're convenient, even though Cole doesn't think so. Back with Will Bull and our baseball show coming up next. It's our last baseball show of this season. That makes me sad. We'll have the coach coming up next. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. 1-1. Drill to left center field. And that one is 
gone. On Thursday, tune in to catch Husker Baseball take on Purdue and West Lafayette. Pre-game coverage with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin is set for 4.30 p.m. on the HRN. On Friday, the softball team matches up with Wichita State in Stillwater for the NCAA Regionals. Pre-game coverage with Nate Rohr begins at 5.45 p.m. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services.
This is the Husker Baseball Show on the Huskers Radio Network with head coach Will Bolt. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. Hawkins comes set. And the 0-2 pitch. Hot shot to third. Backhanding his carry. He has it. Throws to second. No relay throw to first is not in time. It gets off the glove of Cervantes. Efry has it. Anderson applies the tag. It's a triple play. Triple play. The inning is over. Bone Berries 1-1. Drilled to left center field. And that one is gone. Three-run home run for Gabe Swanson. His 15th home run of the year. And the Huskers extend the lead to 19-4. One and two to Carrot. The pitch. That's hit in the air to left. Hit pretty well. Going back is Bobby Marsh to the track, to the wall. It is gone. Josh Karen's seventh home run of the year. Now the 0-1 pitch. Drill to right field. Long run and diving. Not able to get it. Is the right fielder Gerlot. Scoring is Everett. Coming around third is Karen. He's going to score. Headed for third is Carey. Inside he is safe with a triple. A two-run triple. The Oscars have blown it open here in the fifth. Here is your host, Greg Sharp on the Huskers Radio Network. And here we are, our final, my goodness, final baseball show of the year. The head coach, Will Bolt, Huskers, getting ready to wrap up the regular season this weekend in West Lafayette against Purdue. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series because the conference tournament starts next Tuesday up in Omaha. Huskers have officially qualified for that with the results from the weekend. Now it's a matter of trying to battle for some seating for the Huskers as they play the final three regular season games of the year. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. Huskers have won their last four, including a sweep over Penn State. Congrats on the weekend. Yeah, thanks. It was a good week. Uh, you know, <clears throat> got the got the Creighton win on Tuesday with a full game there, and then uh, just took care of business this weekend. I mean, I think I think Penn State's got – they got some talent on that team, and um, – what what we did this weekend it wasn't so much about that that we won all three games although that was the desired outcome it was it was how we played and how we competed and uh just just really really strong contributions up and down the the lineup and um the pitcher the starting pitchers did a nice job and really helped solidify everybody else's roles on the team they came into here this was the 13th weekend of the regular season and on their Friday games, they were 9-3. and three. And that includes beating a Miami team, beating Indiana, sweeping Ohio State. So they were getting themselves off to good starts. But, boy, did you put the hammer down to them on the back half of that Friday game. It was close until the bottom of the fifth when you opened it up. Yeah, and I think they were, they were looking, knowing that they needed to win a couple of series and have a chance to sweep a couple of series potentially to get in the tournament – trying to change some things up as far as what they did with their starting pitching. I mean, they, they've got they've got some bullpen pieces that are – they have very good stuff, but they haven't been getting them off to good starts here of late. So they – you know, it was kind of interesting. We saw the same starting pitcher on Friday and Sunday, which is pretty unusual. Yeah. But um, their left-hander, Morales, got them, got them off to a good start. Um, really the first seven or eight batters of the game, and it just took kind of an error and then a Bryce Matthews home run. And then, um, you know, Lundsman – his stuff was he's up to 97. 97 yeah he's got some of the best stuff in the country and um you know we were very patient against him we had a great approach and a, i think a good game plan going in that the guys did a nice job of executing and then the saturday game was kind of unlike this team where you've really relied along you've had so many home runs that that's been a big part of your offense you don't hit one and yet you find a way to win yeah and that, that's uh well, one of the things we told the team after that game was just if we're going to have a chance to to play for a lot longer here, that that's got to be the kind of a hallmark of this team is not not just having to win a game a certain way where you get ahead and you you bludgeon people with some home runs and extra base hits. You're going to have to make some some on your toes defensive plays early in games. We're going to have to make big pitches to get off the field, um, and we're going to have to play a selfless brand of of baseball because it's. It's a lot to ask for the top four guys in our order to just carry us all the time. I mean, when we've we've had our good stretches of of team offense, that's when we've been at our best um, as a unit. And so that that was good to see, just as far as the sacrifice bunts, the two strike um, moving the baseball, and and they had some good arms this this weekend that we faced. And the thing that was we've been talking about, it seems like every week on this show, is we need to cut down on the strikeouts, and we did that this weekend pretty significantly against uh, some guys with good stuff. 
Good to see both Evans and Carey kind of have yeah. big weekends. Evans is he made a physical adjustment. Um, he he's he's raised his hands and got his hands a little bit closer to his body. Um, he had really kind of had them creeping away from him, and and uh, the slow kind of got long. The swing kind of got long and slow there for a little bit. So he had to make earlier decisions on on pitches where you know when he this weekend the difference was is he swung at strikes, and he didn't chase a lot because the swing felt a lot quicker for him. Dylan Carey's made some physical adjustments as well. He's kind of rode that freshman wave a little bit that yep. we've seen at times. I mean, Bryce Matthews kind of was in that same vein a little bit as a freshman where got off to a hot start, had to make some adjustments, maybe in and out of the lineup a couple times, and hopefully Dylan can finish the way that Bryce did as a freshman where Bryce was on the all-region team. He was one of our best hitters down the stretch. Uh, Dylan Carey is a guy that can do a lot. We've seen him the way he plays third base come to find out he's one of the best bunters on the team he's laid down some amazing bunts in the past week um and he drove he's drove in some big runs for us as well and he's put the ball in play with two strikes crypto king in our youtube chat room coach wants to know how is e fry uh e fry i didn't see him today he was in better spirits yesterday i think it's one of those things where we're going to do our best to try to get him available as a pinch hitter potentially or pinch bunter or you know, whatever you want to call it. He's not going to be able to run. Um, but he was kind of in that same situation a few weeks ago when he laid down a sack bunt where he couldn't really run down to first base because he had a sprained ankle. So a little different scenario than we when we were really, really cautious with, with Garrett Anglum earlier in the year. Number one in that we don't have a whole lot of time left, so we're not necessarily trying to hold him back for anything. Um, if he can swing a bat, and, and that may be yet another week away. Maybe maybe it's the, the Big Ten tournament where he's back and able to pinch hit for us, lay down a bunt, something like that. That may be best case scenario. Right. Who knows? But um, we, we know he's going to be part of it. He's going to be with us. Um, he's going to travel. Um, you know, he's he's a he's a big part of our team. And that was a – what an at-bat. I mean, maybe one of the best at-bats of the year, uh, given the situation. It was a two-out RBI. Um, and then to see him just kind of – have to get carried off the field. I mean, I guess if that's going to be your last game at Haymarket Park, getting getting carried off the field to a standing ovation is not a bad way to go. But, um, no, I, I felt horrible for him. Such an amazing young man. And he he's one of those guys that's going to be ultra successful in, in whatever it is that he chooses I think to he's do. already got kind of something lined up after yeah. the baseball days are over. That's I believe cool. he does. Yep. That's great. Uh, Dorothy Lynch, Homestyle Light and Lean Dressing, Endless Flavorabilities. The texts are flying in for you. Art in Los Angeles. Coach, seems like the small ball key to his, maybe the key to the success, or am I wrong? By the way, very, very proud of this team and you uh, for doing a great job. Go, Let's go get that Big Ten trophy. Yeah, Art, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think um... – yeah, it's something that we've worked on. Uh, I think we made a little bit more of an emphasis last week and maybe made some adjustments with some guys with their bunting mechanics. Um, and I, I think it's one of those things that, um, you know, to be a versatile offense, kind of what we've seen this year at times where if the long ball wasn't in play and we hit some balls to the warning track and then they go over the fence, those are some games that we lost. Now, had the bunt game been a little bit bigger part of it, throughout the course of the year, maybe that could have changed the course of some of those games. So um, hindsight's twenty twenty that way. But, um, you know, playing in uh, TD Ameri or I'm sorry, Charles Schwab. I, I do it all the time. By, you know, by habit there. But uh, playing in that ballpark, it's a big ballpark, you know. So you got to be able to, to execute in a bunch of different ways. And um, it's putting the ball in play with two strikes. It's maybe laying down a bunt. It's maybe a hit and run. It's certainly hitting a ground ball to short with a runner at third and less than two outs. All those little things that kind of help you become a, a, a great offense. It takes you from a really, really good offense to a great offense when we do have guys that they can hurt you with the extra base hit as well. Isn't that one of the beautiful things, Coach, about this sport, though, is different ballparks make you and test you yeah, in different ways. It is. It's the beauty of it. And it's – it's. Uh, and just how the how what the weather is doing on a certain day can, can really yep. even the playing field and on certain days where – you know, uh, our Hawks Field it, it's not. It's very rare that the the ball doesn't travel to at least one side of the field. Um, but yeah, you go to certain ballparks, and a, you know, a north wind blows straight in your face, and it's like impossible to hit a ball out of the park at times. We've seen days this year where it feels like every ball that's in the air flies out of the park, so it really evens it out. So yeah, that's the beauty of our game, right? Where there's just so many different 
factors that can can determine or help determine the outcome of the game. It's not a 100-yard field, same width at, at every yep. place you go play the, the sport of football. Jeff in Omaha for you, Coach. Please discuss the status of Caden Brumbaugh and Mikey Polly for 2024. Yeah, for 24, uh, I'll start with with Brum, uh, Caden Brumbaugh. Um, we've talked about him a few times on this show. Um, he's a guy that our, our coaching staff and I know his teammates – uh, we're, you know, very, very, uh, some expectations for him to be a really big part of this team this year. Just a freak injury for him, uh, doing just some light drill work basically before, I think it was before our 20 hour weeks even started with, with official, uh, spring practice here, had a shoulder surgery, um, dislocated his shoulder and, and, you know, tore some stuff up in there. So. He's been on the mend this entire season. Um, the the hope is, I know he has a checkup later this month. Um, he's hoping to swing a bat here within the next three weeks. Um, he'll start his throwing progressions a little bit later than that and hopefully into fall ball. He's a versatile baseball player. He, he's a guy that we recruited really hard out of high school, um, ended up losing out to him to Oklahoma State, actually ended up playing for my college roommate, Justin Seeley, there. Um, he's their recruiting coordinator and, and, and a third base coach. And so, uh, yeah, he's a really good player. He, he, he was a high school shortstop. Um, he can play second base. Uh, and he, can, he was kind of penciled in to play some center field for us as well. So good player. Um, you know, he's working hard. This is, it crushed him this year to, to have to sit and watch. But he's been there supporting his teammates. Um, and, and he's one that we're excited about for next year. Uh, Mikey Pauly, um, is has decided to play football. Um, he is going, he's entered the portal for football. And I think he recently just announced, told us about a week ago, I think he maybe made it uh, social media official here recently that he is going to go to Kansas and play football. That, that's kind of, uh, baseball was where he burst onto the scene his sophomore summer. And then his junior and senior year, I guess his senior year, he was the Kansas State uh, High School Football Player of the Year, and they yeah. won a state championship. And so he was doing both here, redshirted in football, redshirted in baseball for us, and it looks like he's just going to go to Kansas and play football. Um, so we wish nothing but the best for Mikey. Great kid, great family. He's got some Husker ties, and, um, yeah, hope, hope he does well. Good. Mark in Omaha for you, Coach. Does working on bunting help in other skills like two-strike hitting, bat control, patience? I think what it helps is it helps in the selfless department. Um, you know, Augie Garrido didn't necessarily think that sacrifice bunting was the best offensive tool in terms of having big innings, but um, you kind of go back to the old school line of thinking of, well, you don't, you know, you may be giving up an out, but you're, you're, you're teaching that, that skill and that art of, of um, selflessness for your offensive players that you just, you're setting up your teammates. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say, <clears throat> that it is something that maybe could help you track balls in, um, but anything, but any more than that, I think it's just more of a mindset that if you know you're 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 doing something for your team, maybe gets you in that frame of mind on game day as opposed to 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 being worried about maybe what your statistics look like or you know that you've got to be the hero to help us win games. That it's really just a cog in the wheel of of a nine man just unit that that's trying to score runs. I mean that's. That's really at the end of the day. That that's how I felt we played this weekend, um, and and really in that Creighton game last week. And the results kind of speak for themselves. It, it may not have been as flashy as we've been at times, but that's you got to do what it takes to win. And our guys were willing to do that. And Ben Columbus three straight times. Mm. That was the the job to do to get a bun down. He did it. He did it, and he hadn't been asked to do it a whole lot this year. Um, so it was good. He he did make an adjustment with his bunting form. Over the last week, too, because, um, you know, we just we, we knew we needed to get to that point. And, and so uh, good to see and we were laughing. Uh, Coach Childers and I were laughing in the dugout kind of, um, you know, there was another former catcher here at uh, Nebraska. It was actually their very first year. Andy Sawyers laid down sure. four sacrifice bunts in one season and one game. Uh, and that's the school record, I yeah, believe. So another catcher and he's now the head coach at Southeast Missouri. Um, and, yeah, we were kind of laughing. It's like, hey, we got another catcher coming for, for that sacrifice bunt record. That's great. Coach Bolt really enjoyed the sweep of Penn State. Good luck against Purdue. And please do everything possible to prevent Purdue from making the conference tournament. Enough said. <laughs> All right, we got it. All right, 402-413-2400. That's the number to be a part of the program with a call or a text. Carla 
Brandon, I see your comments. We'll get the coach's reaction to your thoughts coming up next. Our Sports Only Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. The Nebraska Lottery has given over $900 million back to our state since 1993. It's gone to improve our environment, education, and stay fair. Over $900 million? That's something. I'll say. Hey, I have a great idea for a commercial. Have someone count to $900 million out loud. That would take 28 years. Mm, not a good idea. I don't know, with a little background music and some sound effects. There's another studio down the hall. Why don't you get started? The Nebraska Lottery. 30 years of building a better Nebraska. 1-1. One, one. Drill to left center field, and that one is gone. On Thursday, tune in to catch Husker Baseball take on Purdue and West Lafayette. Pre-game coverage with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin is set for 4.30 p.m. on the HRN. On Friday, the softball team matches up with Wichita State in Stillwater for the NCAA Regionals. Pre-game coverage with Nate Rohr begins at 5.45 p.m. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. To win the game, you got to have more strength. You got to be tougher. You got to be reliable. You got to want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. When you're a fan, you wear your team's jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. After a win, your world glistens. Lose and the hurt permeates your soul. You'll always have a place with us in the Cox Fan Zone, where everyone can play and connect with other fans in a big group hug. See, in the Fan Zone, you're not some crazy fan. You're home. Hey, Husker fans, this is Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers. Say Fan Zone into your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit cox.com slash fan zone. Go Huskers! Your story, it lives in River City, where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave. And here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. 
It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with the head coach, Will Bolt. It's our final baseball show of the year, so plenty of time left, though, for you to jump on board with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. Carla said, good evening, uh, Coach. Congratulations to the seniors of this Husker team. I was impressed on the honoring of these young men by having their moms throw out the first pitch to their sons. That was really cool. My compliments to the staff that came up with and presented that idea. Also proud of the Husker fans. It turned out in great numbers for the series against Penn State. Coach, thanks. I love your intensity and devotion to the program. And these young men, they couldn't have a better mentor for their lives. Wow. Thank you very thanks. much. That's uh... Crowds were good. Crowds were outstanding, um, and just there was a kind of a buzz in the stadium. The the, the, the games were were exciting games, and and uh, yeah, it was it was neat. You know, we had an interesting scenario. You know, again with with some of the super seniors who went through senior day last year, who got their their framed jerseys last year. Really neat uh, canvas, the the, the uh, kind of the portraits that they that they got for their second senior day. Uh, and then the moms being part of it for Mother's Day. You know, we've seen that at some other ballparks when we've been on the road for Senior Day and it kind of happens to fall on Mother's Day um, or even just Mother's Day in general that, that we've had, we've seen that. So we kind of got that idea and, and kicked it around with our events and marketing folks. And they made that happen. And, and uh, it's just neat because you know how, how many sacrifices these moms have made for their young, you know, their kids through the, through the years. And now that they're young men, it's like being able to be on the field with their sons is, is pretty special, and I know um, our our players were really excited to be able to do that. So um, that was neat, and and just uh, yeah, just in general, just kind of having that those emotions that were involved on senior day, as they always are. It's emotional for me because there's, I mean, these kids I've known, you know, Shay and 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 Perry. I didn't recruit those guys, but they've been here with us for four years, you know, and um, it, it's been really fun to be part of their journeys and see them grow up. I mean, that's really, and, you know, as, as, you know, the text alluded there with Carla, like I'm tasked with these young men, you know, I want them to be set up for success outside of baseball because chances are pretty high that they're not going to make money playing baseball. Right. Um, now they could go play minor league baseball. Maybe they play in the big leagues, but you're talking about what 1% of 1% that gets to actually like retire as wealthy baseball players. So, right. So yeah, what we do here in our, our program is, is we don't just roll the bats and balls out there. I mean, we're trying to teach them life lessons and the mental toughness that it takes to, to be a winner on the field, but also that what it takes to, you know, to be a, a good father and a good husband. Mom's even had a little creative huddle before they went out. I don't know if you saw that. You might have been handing off the lineup. Yeah, I don't know if happened. I did. What? They got a circle and they were rocking oh, back they and were? forth. And man, okay, it was impressive. Ben and I picked up got on the, it. Got the boys going a little. They bit. did. It was fun. It was fun to do that. All right, let's head to the phones. Doc of Rock, you're up with Coach. Good evening, gentlemen. Go to grad. You bet. First time having a chance to speak with you, Coach, and uh, you know, compliments on the seeds and we were headed in the right direction, you know, big picture and all that. Um, I think the, uh, the bats this year, tell me how many players on the roster in the starting nine have a, a batting average, at least of the three hundreds or upper three hundreds. And then I have a comment. Well, yeah, I would say, seven or eight. yeah, I mean, you've got, it, it, there's been some guys that have been in for most of the year in the three hundreds and maybe dropped off just a touch. I mean, you've got Burnham's been there most of the year, Certainly Bryce and Max have been. Cole Evans has been in that conversation. Garrett Anglum for mo much of the year was over 300. Charlie Fisher. Um, Did you mention Burnham? Mentioned Burnham. Yeah. Yep. Um, Those guys. Gabe Swanson. <laughs> I can't even forget Gabe Swanson in the year that he's had. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a pretty good chunk of guys um, in that lineup and even guys that – 
have come off the bench that are that are around 300 or close to it. Yeah, really like the bats this year. And uh, about the Creighton series, again, this is the first time I'm talking to you, so and maybe this is something we could slip on to Trev if I'm not available to call when he's on. But we just really like to see the Creighton series pushed a little later in the season, maybe instead of a game here and a game there, maybe having a series, you know, consecutive nights. Uh, just would really like to see that from an attendance point of view. I mean, let's face it, when it's warmer, more, more folks uh, come out, and it's, uh, it's a heck of a series. I know everybody enjoys it, so I think you see where I'm going with that and listen to your comments off air. That'll be great. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thanks for the call. Um, so it, it is a little you, – you run in, what you run into is if you played a, a series – um, and maybe you're referring to maybe a couple days in the midweek back to back, like a Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to kind of match those up. And and we did play a Tuesday, Wednesday a couple weeks ago. Don't like to do that very often, especially late in the year, because you end up having five games in a week. <clears throat> really taxes your pitching. Uh, if you were to try to line up and play a three game set, um, their bye week would have to match with ours because um, you're in the thick of conference play as the weather gets warmer. Um, really, the it, there's just not a whole lot of options there when it comes to that. I mean, we we always try to – like last year, we it, this, this final schedule screwed up the third game. We weren't able to, to be able to play that third game at all, so we lost that one. Uh, but we always play that, that game in May where we, we, f- we typically have the biggest crowd like we had la- this past Tuesday um, because the weather is warmer. Um, so – yeah, it's just a matter of just trying to match up the midweeks and you know and those type of things. And if you maybe if you push them all to to May or late April, maybe the crowds would be a little bit better. But I thought we had an outstanding crowd. Yeah. That was in April, I believe. It was it, mid April. Mid April. It was an outstanding yeah. crowd. It was a nice you know warm night. Um, so there maybe there's some other things up for discussion when it comes to the to the, the in state games and and there's no real perfect answer for that. Um, the conference affiliation kind of plays into that of the bye weeks and you know everybody's in the thick of it um so yeah i i we love you know those rivalry games um and and the crowds certainly do too um but it, yeah it's just kind of a matter of trying to match up with the schedules and when we're right in the middle of conference play doc appreciate the phone call andy in our youtube chat room says coach can we talk about swanson's story how he was a walk-on and uh, the guys have mentioned on the radio how he loves hitting the ball at haymarket park Gabe, Gabe is as quiet a guy, young man, at least around us. And, you know, Greg, you and I have talked yep. about it. It's you hardly even hear him say a word. He just kind of gives that sideways smirk and, um, you know, just but he's got a quiet, quiet confidence about him. And he gets that quiet confidence because he's as he's as well prepared a young man as any any in our program uh, in, in terms of, of how hard he works at it. Um, he, he, he's really, really diligent in his craft of hitting a baseball and uh, where we've really seen him evolve in the last year is I, I think he maybe it maybe to a fault was a little too enamored with the mechanical side of things uh, and maybe less about the the you know the other things that are involved in being a good player and a good hitter um, we've we've talked on this show about how much better he's gotten defensively how much faster he's gotten really if you go back and look at it how I think the probably the number one change in him is he's transformed his body in the last year. Um, and that was a big change for him in high school too. He kind of going back to his story in high school, this was prior to us coming to Nebraska, but the way I understand it, he was a kind of a scrawny kid, uh, his freshman and sophomore year in high school, um, always had a pretty good swing and was a good player, but just wasn't very strong. Um, and to all you parents out there, maybe that, that are listening that have kids that are small at a young age, they may have to play with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and they may have to learn some skills to, to help themselves kind of stay afloat. And I think Gabe was one of those guys. And, and if you stick with it and you just continue to, to understand that the kids that are the biggest at 12 aren't always the ones that are, you know, going to be the biggest at 18. So that's a good story with Gabe. He's, uh, he just kind of kept growing and he always had that work ethic and maybe a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because he was told he couldn't do it. Uh, and we gave him an opportunity based on a camp. I mean, we had a recommendation, said, hey, you may have to see this kid in person up close, maybe in a camp setting to determine if you feel like he's got skills to play. 
or not. Um, when we decided to offer him a walk-on spot here, it was based on the bat. It was based on the swing. It was based on the fact that we felt like maybe he was a guy that could grow in our program and uh, didn't weren't sure what position he was going to play. He was an infielder by trade. Um, I think if you really had to put, play him in the infield, um, he could do that. Uh, but we decided to put him in the outfield to see if we could just kind of get something out of his bat last year. Had some good moments for us as a freshman, but – just a great story. I mean, what an awesome young man comes from an amazing family who's very, very supportive. And, man, what a year he's had for us. I mean, it, 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 from a guy, if you if you think back to that first weekend, he got one at-bat in four games to start the year. Wow. And he had a tough at-bat. It was a pinch hit appearance. And I remember seeing him that, that Monday on that off day or Tuesday, I guess it was, that week and said, hey, stay ready. Like, this is not going to define your season. Stay ready. And boy, did he ever. I remember seeing you at a fall practice, not this past fall, but 18 months ago. And you go, Greg, we got this kid Swanson. We, we can't get him out. <laughs> so he got on your radar yeah. right away. Yeah, and really what he did, too, was he, he showed that he, he had a propensity to be able to hit left-handed pitching right out of the chute. So he killed our left-handed pitching in the fall and the early spring. And then he was kind of in that, in that same boat this year to start the year. He had some, maybe a couple guys that were battling for at bats with him, um, but that's kind of where he first got in there. Was like, hey, lefties, like that's that's your thing. And he wasn't quite as good against righties, but man, he's really staying on that right-handed slider. I mean, you saw it. What better example than than yesterday? The home run. Mm -hmm. He hit the home run on a slider to right field in the bullpen, which we've seen him do a number of times this year. Uh, he lined a slider to left field with a runner at second, had no luck there, a line out to left field. Then that, that hit there at the end of the – that huge hit to kind of ice the game for us was a, was a slider they smoked past the shortstop. So he's staying on the slider, and he's getting to the good right-handed fastballs. Brandon from Omaha for you, Coach. Thanks for taking my questions all throughout the season. Now with the short week ahead of you and the conference tournament starting in eight days, how does the starting rotation play out? Are you going to keep the boys on normal days rest, or will some guys go short? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any way around the fact that there's going to be some guys on some short rests. I mean, this week um, will be a week where, you know, you're going to ask the guys to go a little bit short because it is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as you said. Um, and, and then you're going to turn around and most assuredly you're going to play on Tuesday. I guess there is a scenario where you could play Wednesday. Um, I think the 4-5 game could be the, a Wednesday game if – the number one seed chooses to play Tuesday instead. So, and we could very well fall in that four or five range. Right. Um, so I guess the answer is, is that there's going to be some guys on short rest this week at Purdue. Um, and how we handle that kind of remains to be seen just in terms of how long we're going to let those guys go, knowing that, you know, we got to win the tournament to get to the NCAAs. That's just the facts. So that, that uh, now that we've clinched a berth, uh, in that tournament, uh, we know that that's kind of our top priority. Um, we want to win. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I want to go win every game this weekend at Purdue, uh, but we've also got to be cognizant of our of our pitching. And you know, the guys that have have been really really consistent for us, we want to throw them as much as possible next week. And so, how that lines out, probably going to have to just play it by ear this week, just in terms of how these games are going. Um, but I think we'll we'll have a we'll have a chance to to get our ace out there on that Tuesday game or maybe Wednesday, and we'll just kind of figure out how the best the best route to do that's going to be. Very good, Nico from Colorado, coach. Uh, we've been bunting more. Is this due to a strategy change, or are the guys' confidence better? And also, PS bring back the gray sleeveless uniforms. <laughs> Everybody loves the gray sleeveless, but <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we, we've always worked on bunting, but it hasn't necessarily been a big part of this offensive strategy on this year's team just because we, at times, we've had not a whole lot of guys in the lineup that were great at it. Um, but there are some guys that are in the lineup that can do it, and we have put a little bit more emphasis on it as the year's gone along. Quite honestly, as the bats kind of cooled off a little bit, you know, we're starting here, starting thinking, well, you know, some of these guys that are, not swinging it is great. We're going to definitely have to ask them to kind of move some runners around, um, maybe a little bit more than we have in the past. So um, so we have worked on it a little bit more, um, and I think it, it's something that you're going to see for the rest of the year, uh, you know, from this team. So, uh, and the gray sleeveless, 
I, I, Is that I, your era? Yeah, we we you, we wore those again. I think it's sentimental because we were wearing them, <laughs> and you won. Yeah, well, we won going to the World Series and playing in Omaha with them and and all that. So truth be told, they're, they're not my favorite. I, I love them because I I can rem- reminisce and know we played in some really big games on them uh, with them on. But uh, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, Dennis says, Coach, good luck at Purdue. He said this past weekend seemed like we hit a lot of balls right at defenders. What do you say to the hitters? Do you tell them to try a different approach or keep doing the same old thing? Yeah, once the ball leaves the bat, you can't control what happens, you know. So you just pat them on the back, give them fist pounds, and, you know, remind, you know, just, hey, you did everything right. There's nothing else you can do. And I, I can, I said this, I think, maybe in our pregame or maybe a postgame. Like, I, I feel like th- this team is owed about a hundred no blue doubt. pits, you know, a hundred balls with that are seeing eye singles in the next, Hey, let's call it the next six weeks that because it has been one of the weirdest years I've ever been a part of just in terms of feeling like it, there, there's just not been a lot of things that have, you know, we have not certainly made breaks for ourselves at times, but there has been a lot of the lining out. It seems like far more that we've been on the wrong side of it than, than the right side of it. So um, but again, I, I also said it on air. I mean, you start asking the game to give you more. Usually you're left kind of sad. So you just got to keep, keep showing up, keep competing. Um, but you do feel like that, you know, if you just hit enough balls hard, some of them are going to fall. No doubt. Folks, it's time for our last Husker baseball trivia contest of the year, brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. Your chance to win $100 in scratch tickets from the lottery. Limit one winner per household. Uh, so text your quest, your guest to our text line of 402-413-2400. You've got Bryce Matthews with 20 home runs, Max Anderson with 19. The last time the Huskers had two hitters hit over 20 home runs in a season was the year 2000. Who were the two players? If you have the right answer, fire us off a text, 402-413-2400. We'll tell you the winner next. <laughs> From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. 26 Husker students presented research findings on nuclear deterrence to a panel of U.S. Strategic Command officials at STRATCOM headquarters in Bellevue. The student-led presentation was the culmination of a semester of STRATCOM-guided research and the latest in a years-long partnership between STRATCOM and the National Security Studies Program at Nebraska. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Visit Woodhouse Nissan for all your Nissan needs. Whether you're looking to purchase, lease, or finance your next vehicle, our team offers a personalized shopping experience. Right now, lease a new 2023 Rogue SV all-wheel drive for $385 a month, for 36 months, and 5,000 miles per year. Visit one of our two convenient Woodhouse Nissan locations today. With approved credit, tax title, and license extra, discounted price based on sale price of $31,865, minus $600 NMAC cash rebate. VIN number PC767330. Expires 531.23. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. 
Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS. SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared... You spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier job. Deer dealers supply the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our baseball show. Still about 15 minutes. If you want to be a part of the program at 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. We do have a winner. A lot of you got it right. And no, Will Bolt's not one of the right answers. <laughs> that that one's, I think maybe maybe my son, maybe he was he texts <laughs> that in trying to pump me up a little bit or something. But you saw somebody else had a funny one that you chuckled at too, right? Oh yeah, Adam Stern. That yeah, guy, yeah. that guy, guy had no power. So. No power. Yeah, the answer is is uh, Matt Hopper and Dan Johnson. Twenty one home runs apiece for those two guys in two thousand one, a season you remember very well. Yeah, those guys, uh, they had a similar race going on that during that season where it was back and forth and similar to what we've seen this year with Bryce and Max where one guy would hit one and felt like the other one did, and they started talking about it. And, um, yeah, so that, that was – that was a lot of fun, and the little-known fact maybe about the 2000 team, we had the two 20, 20 home run guys. We also led the nation in ERA with that team. So that that is why I still consider – the 2000 team that did not make it to Omaha, uh, probably the best team I played on because of that. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $923 million, which has helped to provide more than 150,000 college scholarships save wildlife habitats across the state and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair, the Nebraska Lottery, helping to build a better Nebraska. Dan Johnson was back a couple years ago finishing up school. Man, did he have a heck of a career. Terrific career for him. 15 years of professional baseball. Wow. Um, and he played from anywhere from Mexico to Korea to Major League Baseball and, you know, made a 
Made a good living in AAA, for that matter, as well. I mean, he he was in AAA and had almost like a Crash Davis like home run type record in in AAA. And man, remembered for his huge home runs on um, the, some of those last ga- games of the season with the Rays. There, um, he's a great guy, and he you know he was my teammate obviously for a couple of years here. But he came back and finished his degree, as you said, and he was a student assistant coach for us, which is something that's really neat here. That Nebraska, there's the support that we show our student athletes and wanting to get them to finish school. He comes back after spending almost 20 years away um, and gets his school paid for because it's the you know the university and athletic department is is committed to our student athletes. So he came back, got his school paid for, finished his degree, and helped us coach. And we we didn't get him for a full season. He was there with us in the 2020 year, the COVID season. Right. So. Only got 15 games in with with Coach Dan Johnson as our uh, he was our bullpen coach, um, and had just helped out and doing whatever he needed to do to help. I, I tell you what he did is he threw really good competitive BP where he would try to strike our guys out. So I think it made them better that way. And and maybe a little known fact about DJ as well is that he he finished his career started his career as a the left handed power hitter. He finished his career as a knuckleball pitcher. He could throw a little knuckleball. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Short week. I'm going to travel on Wednesday. And oh, by the way, it's it's finals week too. Yeah. I mean, they're still they're still they're still <clears throat> student athletes. Yeah. So they're uh, so today was an off day as it always is on Monday. Tomorrow will be trying to figure out how to get as much work as we can. Probably more of a skill day. When I say a skill day, these individual type days where it's small groups come hit, come get your work in, um, and then focus on school. So. Um, yeah, a couple days like that, and then guys have some finals on Wednesday, and we'll be on a plane, and we'll be uh, we'll have a practice at Purdue, which will be nice. Uh, get a, get acclimated with all their ballpark on Wednesday night, um, and then it's the best time of the year when you're a student athlete. It's it's uh, then you're just an athlete at that point in time, and hopefully everybody finishes strong in the classroom. We've got an amazing uh, staff of, of academic advisors and counselors, Katie Jewell, Dennis LeBlanc. I mean, they, they just do such an amazing job um, with our student athletes. And we, you know, our, our, our guys do a great job in the classroom. You know, 3-2 GPA, um, you know, one of the best in the, in the entire athletic department for men's sports. And um, so it's a big part, big part of it is, you know, you want to want to be a winner in life. You got to take care of take care of the classroom so hopefully the guys are all finishing strong finish strong with their finals and then they get to just play baseball here come uh wednesday when we get on that plane and let's hope they're here for another month playing baseball that'd be great hey the 1890 initiative helping husker student athletes navigate name image and likeness to learn more or donate visit 1890nebraska.com we're back to wrap up the show coming up next Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB play of the year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe, think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. (laughs) No big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley irrigation is no different. 
As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. Our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Nico is the one who had our first one to get the right answer to us on the text line, so congratulations, Nico. Tom, in Kansas for you, Coach. Great job this weekend. Cannot wait to spend some time in Omaha watching my prediction come true. You guys are so fun to follow. Keep that train rolling. Go Big Red. Let's stay healthy. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, look forward to, to being there. And, and uh, that, that is all often the case. The, the key is just to, to, to have the health of your, of your guys. And, and uh, you know, I – like I said, to, to start the show, I mean, the, the sweep was awesome. Um, we've had other sweeps that have been great as well, but just the way that one felt, and especially knowing kind of the point of the year that we're at, I mean, you know it's going to come down to the last two weekends, how well you play. Um, and, and I don't like to use the word get hot very often because I, 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 like, I tend to like to think that you have a chance to be more consistent than that not just go hot and cold, but um, – now's the time of the year to get hot you know and how you get hot is you play together and you play as a team and um, everybody's doing what they've got to do and doing what it takes to win and so um, we did that over the weekend we got three wins as a result that's the formula that it's going to take for us to play as long as we want to play you know know a lot of people have been poking at Penn State You, you got all over them Friday but the Saturday Sunday games were competitive baseball games and as we pointed out, they've beaten some really good teams all year. They swept Ohio State earlier this year. So th- they got some guys. So that, that was a nice weekend effort by your club. It was. And, yeah, I mean, you, you see it across the conference. I mean, Minnesota took a game from Maryland. I mean, there, there's been weekends where, you know, I mean, Michigan State started off 10-5. and five really And now, hot. you know, now they've hit some, you know, it's just it's very competitive. I mean, everybody's got good players. Everybody's got good coaches, you know. Baseball's a weird game. I mean, the best team doesn't if the best team doesn't win all the time. I mean, it's it's just who plays the best that day, who catches the breaks. Ultimately, who's got the best pitching is, is typically right. going to have the best chance to win. Right. All right, Purdue grass field. Yeah, Your grass field to go play on. That's a bit of a rarity in North, but we've got a couple of them in the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, and uh, from what I remember, a very nice facility. Mm-hmm. Um, very nice. We were there in 2013. Right when it opened. 2013 um, was the last time I was there. It was the year that they dedicated the ballpark. Yeah. Uh, it was really, really cold when I was there last time, so I look forward to being there in, uh, in May, and hopefully hopefully the, the, the weather's warm and we can um, you know, have some – some good crowds to play in front of. Good. We'll travel safe. We'll see you in West Lafayette. Sounds good. Thanks. Head coach Will Bolt with us here tonight. Buckle up, folks. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Full show coming your way tomorrow night. Husker Baseball on Thursday night, 5 o'clock. First pitch. Our pregame coverage will begin at 4.30. Thanks to Cole Hartman for steering the ship for us tonight. Back with you again tomorrow night. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow... Bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. 
More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Bring even more action to your drive when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Buick GMC. Right now, you can lease the 2023 Buick Encore GX Preferred for $299 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. Explore our current inventory in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. With approved credit, $999 down payment, first payment at $299 doc fee due at 